One thing I've heard over and over when it comes to Rome Research is that it's the first digital note-taking tool that someone has stuck with for a year. They try Notion, they try Evernote, they try a physical note card system, Zettelkasten. Rome has actually transformed the way I take notes, the way that I manage my productivity, and I'm excited to tell you why. Hey guys, I'm Mark Koenig. I'm a writer, marketer, and former startup executive. And on this channel, we talk about ways to enhance our digital productivity to live more creative and intentional lives. So why is Rome research so useful? I have journaled extensively probably for the last decade. I actually have a bunch of those journals here. These are obviously very fun, very tactile, but it's not necessarily the most pragmatic way to take notes. Notebooks are hard to index. Handwriting is a little iffy. Before I transitioned to Rome, the most recent digital tools I tried were actually using an app called Simple Note. And then to get more sophisticated, I added a layer of organization to Google Sheets and created these really intricate multi-tab sheets tracking my fitness, my sleep, my mood, and then finally found Rome. So why is Rome so transformative for so many people? First, it's a friction-free, one-stop shop, super modular solution. Second, it's about freestyling. So it's systems capable, but those systems aren't forced onto you. Third, it's semi-programmable, infinitely adapted to whatever your style is. Rome feels kind of like how you actually think. The primary way that things are structured in Rome is as a bullet or a block. Anything that comes to your mind, anything that you wanna write about, you just start typing, click enter, and then you have a new bullet. Bullets are really supposed to be structured as individual thoughts, a line of thinking. Then you can indent bullets as subthoughts and layer kind of the complexity and the contextual relationship between what you're thinking as you go. It's super hard to overthink typing a bullet. It just allows you to put things down on the page in a way that gets you started. You don't have to kind of plan out a system and a hierarchy in advance. It starts to form on its own. Second, Rome is systems capable, but it's not forced onto you. We try and create these really complicated systems and we can keep those complicated structures going for a week or two at best, but then eventually it all collapses. When I was the manager of a startup sales team, our best thinking always ended up happening either in Google Sheets or Excel or on a whiteboard. No matter how sophisticated our systems got, we kept going back to the fundamentals. You can freestyle the content, you can rework it, you can take pieces and pull them to other places. And while Rome's fundamental unit is writing and text and bullets, you can actually incorporate a lot of visual thinking by screenshotting and dragging it in. Or you can even write directly and draw directly into the app and harness visual thinking. The third reason why Rome works for so many people people is it's almost infinitely adaptable. So there's actually a lot of under the hood tools and ability to program and add almost plugins that enhance it as a product. As you get more and more skilled with the app, it becomes easy to use it for more and more functions that you don't start out with. And I think over time, Rome was actually going to eat the entire market for tools for thinking. If you watch things like Robert Heisfield, Rome Tours, where people are basically walking you through the Rome crib and showing you the different ways they're using it, you can see how many different variations there are on how to use Rome well. So sure, Rome is a neat and interesting tool and it's helped a lot of people, but help them do what? What outputs can you get out of Rome? What systems can you integrate? First, Rome can help you think better. Second, Rome helps you write better, which leads to helping you produce better and create really robust task management systems. Your first thoughts and your first notes aren't going to be your best notes. You really want to take those notes and progressively increase the level of thoughtfulness, compression, and sophistication of those notes as you go. Then you can revisit those notes, highlight, summarize, add more color to them. Eventually, you'll end up with a really crystallized thought. Rome does this supernaturally by just having you spit out bullets, uh, reference old bullets, old content, and then kind of sum them up and compress them into a page. Over time, you link these ideas together and create this fascinating conversation with yourself. Venkatesh Rao talks about how Rome makes hedgehoggy people into foxes. Hedgehog meaning somebody who's interested in tons of topics, tons of ideas. It turns those kinds of folks into foxes who have these really crystallized, cutting worldviews. Adam Kiesling on Twitter said, Rome almost makes cognition a game. You can trust you're building something valuable because you're connecting your own thoughts to yourself. And this really creates a loop where you become a better thinker. Second, when you use Rome, you become a better writer. So there's this guy, this researcher who, let's look him up real quick in Rome. 
Settle cast in. Nicholas Lumen. Nicholas Lumen is the name of the academic who came up with this, and he had to do it on paper. Sucker. He published 70 books and over 400 articles, and he basically bragged about how those books came to him just naturally because of the complicated note-taking system that he came up with. His system essentially made note-taking into fully-fledged writing almost as a byproduct. It worked because he constantly referenced his note cards one to another. Whenever he had a topic that he wanted to write about, he'd simply have to follow the line of thinking around the note cards and combine it into a fully fledged work. Rome does the same thing of actively linking your notes and your thoughts together using something called backlinks. As Venkatesh Rao again says, recall is a virtuous cycle. The better a medium supports recall, the easier it is to attach new information in the right places. And the easier it is to add content, the faster this process snowballs, so a compound interest effect is created. Rome creates this compound interest effect in the form of greater writing outputs easier, higher quality, more regularly. Additionally, there's a lot of quality of life things that make writing really fun and engaging. There's this sidebar that you can use where you can have multiple documents open at once, pull and drag pieces of your writing from area to area. You can create versions of what you're writing on a block by block level. So individual paragraphs, you can compare and look at them against one another as they develop over time. You can embed pieces of writing that you've done earlier into your new writing. And then if you edit it in either spot, it will seem update it. There are whole sections of this video that I didn't even have to think about. I just had to reference my previous thoughts on it. Third, Rome helps you produce better. Manage your tasks, your to-dos, be a more productive person. Good outputs are a byproduct of good thinking, not the reverse. If you do your day-to-day -day thinking in Rome, you end up starting to come up with to-do items, tasks, associated topics that you want to action later. You can really easily transform your existing lists and bullets into to-do lists and items to check off. You can press keys to really quickly cycle between these states of done, not done, and a regular bullet. Additionally, anytime you tag a to-do item, that item automatically populates to your to-do list. And if you set up those to-do lists in a certain way, you can actually see your daily, weekly, recurring, or monthly to-dos delivered right to you. Using the system in Rome, I basically never forget anything that I'm supposed to do. I can easily and quickly prioritize it. And then when I check that to-do list box off, it is tagged universally across the whole database. So anywhere it appears, it marks as done. Another form of productivity in Rome is tagging things with dates. This is a great way to set reminders to yourself in the future or to remind yourself of things when they last happened in the past. Anytime you tag something with a date, it'll automatically appear in your daily note in the future date that you tag it. I even create custom tags like recurring task or once monthly task. This reminds me to do things like certain chores, backing up my laptop, monthly or weekly reviews. Basically anything I want to will stay top of mind while not being so intrusive and demanding as an actual calendar reminder. Finally, if you use Rome for a lot of day-to-day -day tracking of what you did during the day, almost as a live journal, you'll end up tagging a lot of people and you'll end up creating this kind of personal relationship manager database without even needing to be explicit about it. Eventually you end up using this intentionally. So you tag items with new ideas or business ideas, questions to answer, things to learn more about. And this is really a way of tracking your kind of evolving interests and thoughts over time and sorting them back later to you. Anytime that I go on a Google hunt for any kind of information, I store what I found, the best resources in Rome. That way, if I ever want to look up, for example, best YouTube production lighting, I'll have 10 pre-vetted links and resources that I've already found useful in the past, so I don't have to go through that process again. If you want to search for all recipes that have spinach and feta and take less than an hour to make, you can actually pre-tag those terms and then filter them later. So if you want to jump into Rome research and understand all these features and more, I'll be talking a lot more about Rome on this channel. Feel free to join me on the journey. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.